This episode of Retro Blasting is brought to you by Yojo Outlet and Museum Center. With over 6,500 vintage toy parts available on eBay every day, Yojo Outlet is the best source, not just for G.I. Joe parts, but for any toy line you can think of. We've been buying from them for years, and when we see that Cobra logo underneath the item, we know we're getting accurate descriptions and fast, reliable shipping. We weren't paid for this endorsement. We weren't given free stuff for this endorsement. We just like Yojo Outlet that much. Yojo Outlet is not a chop shop. They know vintage toys, and when it comes to vintage toys, knowing is the entire battle. I've been dying to give the Thunder Tank a real workout, and there's just never going to be a better reason for a trial run. In Retro Blasting's wide collection of toys, there's a small box that contains a humble group of action figures from my childhood. These figures are tucked away safely, and they don't see the light of day all that often. It might not be hard to guess why. The box is labeled Thundercats. It would be an understatement to say my opinions on Thundercats are outspoken. Thundercats was the subject of Retro Blasting's first video back in 2012, and to date, the thousand plus votes on the video are split 50-50. Thundercats is a contentious property for me, both personally and as a YouTube creator. You see, in 1985, I was on the bandwagon when the show launched. I bought a Lion-O figure, had the Sword of Omens toy, and went to Burger King to get a themed kids meal. That Christmas, my cousin gave me Mumra. I won't say I was a super fan, though. That accolade went to my brother. Jonathan loved He-Man, and then transitioned smoothly into Thundercats. In fact, one of the few photos we have from the 80s with our toys is my brother and I posed with Jonathan's Thundercats collection. And yeah, the lion -O and Mumra in that photo are mine. But Thundercats didn't hold my attention for very long. I was more fascinated with Mask, and the next year I was really banking on the Silverhawks. I even had the Silverhawks tennis shoes. The Space Cops idea just appealed to me more than the Earthbound Cat People. Around this time, my brother's attention was somewhat fractured as well. He was dabbling in Brave Star, in Humanoids, Centurions, and others. He was a kid without a harbor. It wouldn't be until the Ninja Turtles in 1987 that he would find his next obsession. When we started Retro Blasting, I wanted it to be a series that held itself to a standard when presenting toys. Never show broken toys and no missing pieces unless there's a very good reason for doing so, because I found that oftentimes vintage toys get the short shrift on YouTube. Fortunately, our childhood Thundercats toys had been well taken care of, but they still had some issues. Because it was our first video and we hadn't found our footing yet, I had to use some sleight of hand to make it work. For example, you might not have noticed that Mumra's sword didn't have a handle, but the biggest issue was the Thunder Tank. LJN made the Thunder Tank with these wide rubber treads, if you look online for a Thunder Tank, the treads are almost always long gone. My brothers lost a tread on one side way back in the 80s. So when I filmed the tank for the video, I only did so from one angle to obscure the missing tread. But Retro Blasting has a motto, leave no toy behind. Just because I don't enjoy the Thundercats cartoon, it doesn't mean that I'm going to neglect these toys. I recently replaced Mumra's broken sword. Now it's time to tackle the Thunder Tank but there's an added challenge with these treads. There are all kinds of schools of thought in toy collecting circles on what's appropriate to repair and what should be left original. I look at it like this. If the material the item is made from will crumble into dust, then that item needs to be replaced to maintain the integrity of the toy. Generally speaking, molded plastic parts last a very, very, very long time, with only a few exceptions, so reproduced plastic pieces are something I try to avoid. However, paper stickers or dry rotting rubber parts? I'm not going to lose sleep at night knowing I looked for reproductions of those materials. One day your Optimus Prime or your mask vehicle is going to have dry rotted wheels, and you're going to hope that there's someone out there making exact reproductions of those parts. It's like having a classic car. Do you want it to rot down to the ground knowing that all the dust around it was original? Or do you want to actually keep it functioning? In my mind, I'm going to keep it functioning. I'm going to keep it on the road. Fortunately, thanks to the Thundercats' rabid fan base, the Thunder Tank is getting this needed help. An enterprising eBay seller named Otterwater27 out of Idaho is making amazing Thunder Tank replica treads. 
These treads are made from the same rubber urethane as the originals, and they look all but identical. I couldn't wait to order this set, and I won't be rolling this tank along the ground, so I'm guessing these treads will last a very long time. Replacing the treads on the Thunder Tank is pretty straightforward, but you don't want to just rip the treads off by forcing them over the wheels, because when you do that, you could actually rip the rubber. Now, in the case of most Thunder Tanks, the treads are already long gone, but when you're installing your new ones, you also need to respect the design of the Thunder Tank by doing a little bit of pre-prep before you slide those treads on. And that involves removing these two uh, sort of guard wheels from the outside of the tread. There's a screw, it's a Phillips head screw on each one, so it's not that big a deal. You just get your screwdriver in there and gently remove the screw. Now, once you do that, you're gonna have two uh, extra pieces that come off with the screw. You have the screw, like so. You have the wheel itself, and then you have this extra piece that's behind the wheel. It's sort of like a, like a hub center, or almost like wheel bearings. And you always want to make sure that that flanged end of this piece is on the back side of the wheel. So I'm going to keep this together in its original configuration. Set it to the side. All right, now I'll remove the back wheel. Come on, there we go. That's off. And now as you can see, the Thunder Tank's treads don't have these extra lips that they're going to have to be pulled over. So we can just, as gently as possible, slide this tread off. And the reason I'm doing this is because even though this tread is a vintage original, it doesn't match with these treads because these treads are brand new. This Thunder Tank tread probably looks similar to this in 1985. Um, so I'm putting on a brand new pair of treads so that when it's on display, uh, it will look correct. But I'm going to save this tread. I'm not going to throw it away because it is a survivor. So there is the original Thunder Tank tread from the 1985 LJN Thunder Tank, and this one is still in immaculate condition. So we're just gonna set that off to the side here. And now we're gonna slide on one of these new treads. The nice thing about the new treads is you don't have to be as careful with them. And it's a perfect fit, as you can see. Looks good on display. And now we're just gonna put these uh, these wheels back on. Now that the Thunder Tank is repaired, it's a very sharp looking toy, and it was fun to play with as a kid. It had the transformation mode that Panthro used on the show, which is awesome, and it looks great in standard mode, very true to the animation. But the toy isn't without its drawbacks. For one, the treads don't roll very well, and you can forget them working on carpet. Makes sense why so many ripped apart. Just a bad design. In addition to the fragile treads, the toy is woefully undersized. Lion-O is almost twice its height, even though they leap onto it in the series. The tank is guilty of the same sin as the Ghostbusters Ecto-1, as it only accommodates two of the heroes, one in the front and one in the back, and the back seat, as the box indicates, only really works with Panthro, which is why his action figure is sculpted in that awkward crouching position. With only one seat up front, the rear cabin would be the place to pile up the rest of the figures, a la the Ninja Turtles party wagon, but the spring-loaded gunner's chair takes up the entire rear section when closed, and that spring-loaded gizmo loves to pop up when you don't want it to. Getting it closed is something you almost have to plan your day around. In fact, if LJN had just restrained themselves and scaled down the figures to, say, superpowers height, or better yet, G.I. Joe scale, the Thunder Tank would have been just as cool in toy form as it was on the show. I'm never going to be wild about the Thundercats. It's just not the series for me but I've never denied they were a notable chapter in 1980s history. And despite the scaling issues, the figures are colorful and look nice when displayed. Last year, I upgraded the Wily Twins, and I've since tracked down the few missing pieces I need. Now with the Thunder Tank repaired, it's a striking set. But I keep thinking something is missing. There. That's better.